Hi, and welcome to Plane Legacy. Today we're looking at four different versions of the Republic F-84, a single-seat fighter aircraft always in the shadow of the more effective F-86 Sabre. The design for the F-84 went through significant changes, from a straight wing to swept wings, from an air intake in the nose to air intakes in the wing roots. It was a fighter that was more effective against ground targets than the MiGs that it faced. Eclipsed by better designs on both sides of the Cold War, there were over 7,500 produced for the United States and 14 allied nations. Despite any promise of the aircraft and its various developments, weak performance, structural problems, and engine supply delays dogged every model of the F-84. The F-84 began in 1944 as a response to a general operational requirement for a fighter capable of at least 600 miles per hour. The prototype and early models featured a slim fuselage with an Allison J-35 turbojet producing a meager 4,900 pounds thrust placed behind the cockpit with a round air intake in the nose. Fuel was stored mostly in the wings and wingtip fuel tanks. The XP-84 first flew on February 28, 1946, and entered service the following year. The National Security Act of 1947 created the United States Air Force as a separate branch of the U.S. military, who later changed the letter P for pursue to the letter F for fighter, and the Thunderjet was known from then on as the F-84. However, technical issues revealed during wind tunnel testing nearly eliminated the design until the D model was declared operational in 1949. One issue was the effect of the 226-gallon wingtip tanks on the aircraft. Defects that plagued the A through C models led to the aircraft being dubbed as the Mechanic's Nightmare, while the Air Force doubted its ability to even perform its mission. The D model had thicker skin and triangular fins on the wingtip tanks, but even with the improved J-35A-17 engine, the D model had a longer takeoff roll and was less maneuverable than the P-80 Shooting Star. However, it was faster than the P-80 with a better high altitude performance. The F-84E model, shown here, had its fuselage lengthened 12 inches in front of and 3 inches behind reinforced wings for a larger cockpit and avionics space. Pylons under the wings enabled two additional 230-gallon drop tanks, and the aircraft had an A-1B gun sight and AN-APG-30 range-fighting radar. Wing racks folded flush with the wing after the rockets were fired in order to reduce drag. While an improvement, issues with engine parts and supplies kept the E-model out of service at a very high rate. The Air Force retired them from service in 1956, relegating them to Air Force Reserve and Air National Guard units until the late 1950s. One major complaint was the long takeoff roll and sluggish climb out, leading to nicknames like the Lead Sled and the World's Fastest Tricycle and other saltier nicknames. Poor takeoff acceleration was common in early jets, and JADO or RATO were often required to assist on takeoff, especially from shorter airfields and hotter conditions when the plane was fully loaded. Its speed limitation at lower altitudes put it at a disadvantage against the MiG 15s it faced, because overspeed often led to the disintegration of the airframe. F-84 Thunderjet serving in Korea in the fighter role had a poor kill-to-loss ratio against the MiGs. With a length of 36 feet 5 inches and a wingspan of 38 feet 6 inches, early models had a top speed of 620 miles per hour. Its cruising speed was 485 miles per hour and had a range of 1,485 miles and a service ceiling of 43,240 feet. For comparison, the more maneuverable MiG-15 had a top speed of 670 miles per hour and a service ceiling of 51,000 feet. Plus, it was armed with two 23mm and one 37mm cannon. But the F-84 Thunderjet performed well in low-level interdiction missions, flying over 86,000 sorties. The F-84 was tasked with attacking vital enemy transportation-related targets, supply depots, and troop emplacements. Armed with six 50 caliber machine guns, they could also be equipped with eight unguided 5-inch high-velocity aircraft rockets, or HVAR, 
or 2,000 pounds of bombs or napalm. The F-84G was an upgrade designed to address the deficiencies in the D and E models. The F was actually the next model anticipated in the series, but there were so many production delays with that one that an additional straight-wing aircraft designated the F-84G actually came out first. The G model had a more powerful J-35A29 engine with 5,560 pounds of thrust uh, and came with both autopilot and ILS. It is the first aircraft produced with in-flight refueling capability. It was also the first fighter designed to carry a nuclear bomb in the form of the Mark 7. However, engine shortages once again hampered the effectiveness of this model. The F-84E, shown in today's episode, was delivered to the museum in 1963. While listed as an E model, it is marked to represent the F-84G flown by Colonel Joseph Davis Jr., commander of the 58th Fighter Bomber Wing in 1953. Sometimes when an airplane gets a noticeable upgrade, it also receives a new number. An example would be the Convair F-102, whose upgrade wasn't the F-102B, but the F-106. Or the Bell P-39 and its successor, the P-63. However, sometimes just a new letter and a new nickname is assigned, as is the case with the F-84F Thunderstreak. That is because originally the F model was supposed to contain only a few small modifications, but that's not how things turned out. The models A through E and G are known as the Thunder Jet, a laminar flow straight wing fighter design. Their competitor, the North American F-86 Sabre, was the first American fighter to incorporate a swept wing design influenced by captured German research and technology. Republic also decided to adapt a swept wing design and apply it to the F-84F Thunder Streak and RF-84 Thunder Flash. Republic produced just over 2,100 F models and General Motors jumped in assisting with nearly 300 more of the swept wing F-84 platform. The sweep angle on the wings of the F-84F was 38.5 degrees, and it also had a 3.5 degree anhedral along their 33 foot 7 inch span, and the tail services were also swept. Republic equipped the F-84F with the Wright J-65W3, capable of 7,220 pounds thrust, enabling a top speed of 695 miles per hour and a service ceiling of 46,000 feet, depending on your source. To fit the engine, though, the fuselage was stretched vertically, resulting in an oval-shaped engine intake opening. It was constructed with stronger wings, a new canopy design, and the air brakes were relocated from the bottom to the sides of the aircraft. All these changes meant that only a small percentage of this aircraft was compatible with the tooling used in building the straight-wing models. Some were even retrofitted later with spoilers for better control at high speeds, and a hydraulic one-piece stabilator. For these reasons, it was a departure from the earlier F-84s. Armament still consisted of six 50 caliber machine guns, but the Thunder Streak was outfitted to carry 24 of the unguided 5-inch HVAR rockets, and 6,000 pounds of bombs or napalm externally. They could also be armed with the Mark 7 tactical nuclear bomb equipped with the LABS, or Low Altitude Bombing System. But the F model still had the same long takeoff roll, high landing and takeoff speeds as the straight-winged F-84s, and it was usually unrecoverable in a spin below 10,000 feet. Its life in the United States Air Force was short-lived, entering service in 1954 and being removed almost immediately from active service over the next few years, replaced by the supersonic North American F-100 Super Sabre. Some F-84s were recalled and sent to Europe as a show of force in response to construction of the Berlin Wall in 1961. Reserve and Air National Guard units kept them on their roster until 1971. The Thunderstreak shown in today's video was flown to the museum in 1970 following its assignment to the Ohio Air National Guard. During its career, it served in England, Greece, Alaska, and the continental United States. In 1961, it participated in the mass deployment of 200 fighter aircraft across the Atlantic Ocean to Europe in response to the Berlin Crisis. The Thunder Flash was the reconnaissance variant of the F-84F, with its engine intake moved to the wing roots. 
That allowed placement of up to 15 cameras in the nose while still retaining four 50 caliber machine guns. Some of these RF-84s served in the Fighter Conveyor or FICON program and were designated the RF-84K, distinguished by a retractable hook in the upper part of the nose, rods on either side of the aircraft, and downward angled horizontal stabilizers, enabling them to fit inside the GRB-36's bomb bay. Briefly, the FICON program were experiments to attach fighters to a B-29 and later B-36 bomber, either by connecting them at the wingtips or underneath the bomber itself. The parasite fighters would be carried closer to a target, fly a mission from the mothership to bomb a tactical target or to perform a reconnaissance mission, and then return to the bomber for a ride home. It proved too technically demanding to be practical. Reliable in-air refueling met FICON programs were no longer necessary, and its aircraft were then assigned to traditional airfields. The individual range of the RF-84K was up to 2,000 miles on top of the GRB-36's 10,000-mile range. The Thunder Flash aircraft were in service from 1954 to 1957 and reactivated again in 1961. They remained in service with Air National Guard units until 1972. The aircraft in today's episode is marked as it appeared while serving in the 91st Strategic Reconnaissance Squadron in the mid-1950s. The XF-84H is the result of a search for a turbine-powered supersonic propeller-driven aircraft. Originally, it was a joint Navy and Air Force program, the Navy hoping to find an aircraft that could take off from a carrier without the need of a catapult. However, the Navy soon lost interest in what became a purely experimental program. Designers hoped to combine the speed of a turbojet with the greater fuel efficiency and lower landing speeds of a propeller aircraft. The 12-foot diameter, constant speed, square tip propeller provided thrust, as did the Allison XT-40 engine and afterburner. The outer two to two and a half feet of propeller blades traveled above the speed of sound even at idle, producing continuous shock waves which caused nausea and headaches in the ground crews, explaining why its unofficial nickname was the Thunder Screech. Tested at Edwards Air Force Base, the Air Force complained the shock waves interfered with their delicate test equipment and requested engine run-ups be conducted out on the Muroc Dry Lake bed, though some said the sound could be heard up to 25 miles away. The XT-40 engine was fitted to an F-84F airframe with a lengthened fuselage of 51 feet 5 inches and basically the same wingspan of 33 feet 5 inches. Like the Thunder Flash, the air intakes for the engines were located in the wing roots. The tail was reconfigured to a T-tail and a triangular fin was added to the top of the fuselage behind the cockpit to reduce the effects of torque created by the propeller. Only Republic pilots flew the aircraft and the project was canceled after 12 flights. It had a top speed of 520 miles per hour, a range of 2,000 miles, and a ceiling of 40,000 feet. Mechanical problems and the effect of the propeller's constant sonic booms led the Air Force to cancel the project in September of 1956. Only two airframes were built, one of which was scrapped. The XF-84 was the first aircraft fitted with a ram air turbine that could be extended into the airstream in the event of an engine failure so the aircraft could maintain electrical and hydraulic power. It was put through frequent real-world testing owing to engine failures in the test program. Of the 12 flights, 11 ended in emergency landings, 10 of those being the result of an engine failure. Part of the legacy of the Thunder Screech, though, is the Ram Air Turbine device, which is used on a variety of aircraft even to this day. The aircraft shown in today's episode is the sole surviving XF-84H. It completed eight of the 12 test flights. After the test program ended, it became a gate guardian outside Meadows Field Airport, Bakersfield, California, with an electric motor spinning its propeller. In 1992, volunteers from the 178th Fighter Wing of the Ohio Air National Guard obtained this aircraft and contributed over 3,000 hours returning the Thunder Screech to display condition. The museum took possession of the aircraft in 1999. Thank you for watching today's episode. Please be sure to click the like button and subscribe to be notified of future episodes. 
Feel free to comment about which of the F-84s you like the best or any experience you or someone you know had with it in the service. We'll see you next time right here on Plane Legacy. Mm-hmm.